My name is Elizabeth Camp. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I am 34 years old, I think, and I am a spirit guide. How I found my way into healing, well, when I was around the same age, 13 or 14, um, I was out one night with friends and um, I told my friend, give me your hands. And he put his hands out and I put my hands on top of his and I was like, can you feel that? And I was like, whoa. And I just, there was, I was feeling, all, I didn't know what it was. I, think I, I don't even know if I was calling it energy then, but I was feeling all this energy and I was like, here, I'm gonna send it into you. And he was like, okay. And I willed it, like I, I, I don't know how to explain it so much. It's just like, I could see it, I visualized it, and I felt it, and I asked it to go. Fast forward probably 10 years, and I was at a Peter Rowan and Tony Rice show. And I met someone there um, who was talking to me about Reiki. He didn't even know what it was, but he said that he had met somebody who, I don't know if this was going to be his teacher or if it was someone who was bringing him to a teacher, uh, because he had the same ability that I had done with my friend 10 years pr prior to that. And I was like, well, show me. So he grabbed my elbows and shot energy up through my arms that was so incredible that I kind of jumped back a little bit. And I was like, wow, that's really amazing. And when he did that, I, it planted a seed hearing the word Reiki. And so fast forward another 10 years, um, I was talking with my husband and he asked me, um, so what are you gonna do after the baby is old enough to go to daycare or go to school? because at that point I had already decided I wasn't gonna go back to my old job, which was working at a jewelry store, and I loved that place, but it wasn't enough. I remembered, that guy told me about Reiki. I wonder what that is. So I looked it up, and I was reading about it, and I was like, you know, I think that's something that I could really do. Actually, I think I've done that before. And then I remembered back when I was 13, playing with energy with my hands, with my friend, and saying, you know, I did do it before. Um, I, th I really think I could do this. And um, then a friend of mine um, had just gotten her Reiki One attunement and was doing free sessions. And so um, signed me up. So I went over to her house and we did a session together. She asked me what my goals were and we came up with that I was looking for clarity and energy. And we had our session and honestly I left there thinking that nothing really happened. Like that was kind of weird. I just laid on the table and she like put her hands on me and I didn't really feel anything. Um, so <laughs> within two days I was um, walking at the park and that became a regular thing. And so there was my energy. And they really, it really became a walking meditation. Um, so as I was walking, and, I, and this is a beautiful park too, lots of trees, you can almost fool yourself that you're not in the middle of the city. And this voice in my head was whispering, Reiki, Reiki, and I thought, Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, I, I think I could probably, t yeah, I think I should. And then I, then my friend was was walking with me, and she said out of nowhere, you know, I've been thinking about going and, and learning how to do Reiki, and I was like, no way, me too. Let's do it together. So we found a teacher. Um, her name's Amy Barr, and she's amazing, and she does long distance work too. And uh, she was someone who my mom had been going to see. Um, and my mom had bought um, a session for me with her to make an energy drawing. And I went there and I was, I was telling Amy about how I had been thinking about getting a Reiki attuned and, and learning more about it. And she said, hey, actually I teach. I was like, all right then. <laughs> 
in Reiki, there are three attunements. Um, the first one is um, where you can do self-Reiki or work on somebody that's in the room. Level two, you can do long distance. For a person, um, you can send it to the elements, you can send it to a river, you can send it to um, a situation like the earthquake in Haiti or something like that. Um, level three is becoming um, a master, which means that then you have the ability to um, pass attunements to other people and you can um, be a teacher. The f my first Reiki attunement was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had in my life. So. We talked for a while at first um, about what it was, the history of Reiki, and how, how to perform or practice. And I believe I went first. My friend watched, and I was sitting in the chair, and Amy was giving me the attunement. So anybody who doesn't know what an attunement is, it's when the Reiki master opens up the abilities of their students. So it's kind of passing on um, the energy. It's kind of a ritual. Um, she puts all, there's Reiki symbols. Um, she puts inside of you, draws them over your crown and brings them into your body. Um, and as she was doing that, I felt this energy calm down over my head and it kind of stopped at my cheekbones. That was really cool. And then I went down a little further. And as it was sinking down through me, like my body felt better and better and better as I was like going down into me. And I just felt like I like just got to, I don't know, it was like I had never been alive before, before that moment. It was the most incredible feeling. And then my second attunement, I didn't feel anything at all. <laughs> so you know, you just can never tell between one, one time to the next what it's going to be like. My first Reiki session was um, was from Liz. I felt heat, I saw colors, um, and it was very relaxing um, and calming. I had already gotten my second attunement and I was a few months into it. Um, I was in a session with my friend and I was giving and all of a sudden I just was getting this really strong energy flow so much so that I was crying and shaking and I, my friend is laying on my table and I'm saying I'm so sorry I know this is supposed to be about you but I don't know what's going on right now and she's very kind and she's like it's okay I can still feel it everything's still happening so I was still there as a conduit for her, but something really intense was, was happening for me. And when it was all over, I'm like, I don't know what that was. And then later my friend left and I was sitting there in my, in my Zen room and I asked my guides, I was like, what in the world was that? What just happened? And they said, we gave you your Reiki 3 attunement. And I was like, really? You can do that? And they're like, are you kidding? Yes, we can do that. And um, it, it, it took me a minute to kind of um, really grasp what had just happened. She was not really confident in that. She's like wanting to hear from her teacher that this is an okay way to get her attunement. And her teacher's like, if your guides gave you the attunement, that's more real than, you know, that's as real as what I can give you face to face. It was, you are to create your own class material. This is. This is your work. This is your calling. And um, not just anybody gets this kind of attunement. And it was it's a gift because you're ready for it. And they wanted you to be able to do this. That was more validating to me than in going and paying somebody for an attunement. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, but for me personally, that was... A, I don't even have a certificate <laughs> that I did any Reiki. So... Um, but now I'm the one printing the certificates and, and mailing them out to people, so that's kind of fun. And I really enjoy it. And it's truly been um, a calling for me. And to 
have that sort of, I hate to even call it a job because to me a job is something that you hate, <laughs> that you're like, or feel like you have to go do. But this is something that um, that I love doing, that I get, I feel like I get just as much out of it as my clients do. And, um, and I just, I'm so excited that I found it now so that I have the rest of my life to practice. Um, she's really opened up to a whole lot more than just being able to send energy to someone else. So I wasn't surprised in the least bit to see that open lots and lots of other doors for her, like contact with spirit guides and ability to do psychic work. I've seen Liz grow from not really similar to what I was just saying about how you don't really know how you're coming across to the person that you're trying to help so there is a need for feedback from them and when she was getting started um, the psychic work that she was doing when she got started was all in energy drawings so she would draw this stuff and it just kind of came to her and then she would talk to someone about the f what she got and why this was there on their drawing or whatever and time after time after time it would be something really profound to them like they're like how did you know this happened like this just happened to me and she's like it's just it's what I saw and um, so as she had those experiences she built more confidence and as that confidence grew her ability to listen um, to the to those messages and see those signs um, has really increased so it's been fun to see her go from I don't know whether this is helping to I know this is going to help so it's been a, uh, an, an empowering journey something very wise that one of my guides told me was it's not a matter of you learning, it's a matter of you remembering. And that's always stuck with me. So when something feels familiar, I'm like, I have to remember how to do this because I know I've done this before. It's a matter of tapping into that knowledge, that well inside of you that is the unlimited source of knowledge. I use methods of uh, Reiki healing, um, I also do a Theta meditation and I am in touch with my spirit guides and my clients, uh, whoever would be with me, and um, bring all of those things together to do um, uh, psychic counseling, um, energy healing, um, to help guide those who want guidance. What I hope for for the future is to um, not only just continuing my practice and expanding that and becoming um, you know, even better at my craft and what I do, but to practice in a place where I also have community, um, where I'm surrounded by other people that are also pursuing the same thing. So today I went and saw his Holiness the Dalai Lama was here downtown and I was just filled with so much uh, just joy I guess is the right word by being in this space with all these people who were pursuing the same types of things that I was. We did a 15 minute meditation and to be in a crowd of 7,000 people who are all meditating together to bring out the Dalai Lama, it was like incredible. And I'm like, I want to recreate that experience in this arena and in this space and here and here. And so to be at a place like um, the Gathering of the Tribe and you get all of those people together and feel that community, it's really important. And I want to raise my kids in that type of environment also. Ryan and I have talked about creating a healing retreat. We've talked about buying land for a long time. 
Um, and I really feel like at this point, it's just a matter of time. And so everything that I'm doing now is just building me up for this other greater, you know, thing that's going to happen. You are what you say you are. You are what you feel you are. So make sure that you're saying and feeling wonderful things. If you want to attract things into your life um, that are positive and good, then that's done. It's already done. You're already doing it. I want to empower people and I want to uplift people. And everyone has the ability to do what I'm doing. Everyone does. Everyone has the ability to talk to their spirit guides. Everyone has the ability to heal others. It's just what is your what is your gift? How do you do it? We're all spiritual beings having this human experience. And if you can keep that in the forefront of your mind, it can make this earthly life much easier. <laughs> Cuz sometimes the pressure uh, builds up and it can be really hard to handle sometimes. Um, but if you can remain connected to the divine while also remaining grounded to the earth, um, and if you can find that balance, that's where it's at. <laughs> and that's where Ricky helps me. So that's nice. <laughs>